Greetings, Alpha Citizens. This is Craig Allen. Tonight's top stories, Rock Sonar and the First Sun heading to Lost Temple, Alpha City News Studios attacked, Viad saves students, Captain Stupendous and Empyrean meet over threat, and more tonight on Alpha City News. From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only newscast that gives you all the super news in the city or the world. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Before we begin today, Alpha Citizens, we at Alpha City News must issue a correction from last week's episode. Last week we reported that Crankor from Space Lemuria got into what was essentially a slap fight with Hot Bucket, both of whom were then taken down by Oddball, leader of the Odd Squad. In truth, Crankor from Space Lemuria got into what was essentially a slap fight with the Bucket Kicker both of whom were then taken down by Oddball, leader of the Odd Squad. We regret this error. Atlantean emissary Janna Ball has given permission for Rock Sonar and his fearless frogmen to assist Atlantean scientists with the excavation of what appears to be a lost Atlantean building complex, which the frogmen discovered some time ago. The pristine white marble complex is defended by a number of automatons mimicking local sea life, though their number was reduced by Sonar and his men, while saving Frogman Frenchie Montaigne, captured during the Frogman's initial reconnaissance of the building. Given the active and unfriendly nature of the automatic protection, Sonar and his men will be accompanying the Atlantean hero First Son as the lead units entering the complex. It's hoped that a control center will be discovered, allowing at least some of the automatons to be preserved rather than destroyed. Rock Sonar, when interviewed by Alpha City News' intrepid reporter Lindy Johnston, said that he was honored to be working with the First Son, who the Frogmen have a very good relationship with, and that the complex to be investigated is the most exciting find he and his men have ever had in their storied history. We say good luck to them all, and we eagerly await news of what the complex holds. In an interesting inversion, Alpha City News was in the news this week rather than reported it. Wednesday morning, we here at ACN found our studios in the Scott Building under siege by a horde of flying gray battlebots which were in no way sent by Heredry Industries in retaliation for Alpha City News ending the advertising of that company on our network. We know that they could not have been from Heredry Industries because on their chests, the words not A were sloppily painted above the carefully stenciled words Heredry Battlebot. That's lucky for Heredry, as any company which produced these machines should be ashamed of themselves. After the first barrage of lasers destroyed our south-facing windows, one of the machines attempted to enter our studios, only to crash into the wall directly above the window, after which it fell ten stories. This apparently caused some sort of targeting malfunction as the majority of the horde followed the first battlebot down to the ground floor and joined it in ransacking a Captain Quick convenience store. This led to some of the other battlebots being damaged, causing a cascade of malfunctions, some battlebots opening fire on their own kind, falling prey to malfunctions caused by electronics, becoming soaked in soft drinks from burst cans, and getting hit by cars in the street, as well as a few that blew up for no discernible reason. By the time police arrived, most of the battlebots had destroyed themselves. Of the small number that didn't participate in the destruction of the Captain Quick, they remained floating outside our south windows doing nothing, except for one which began to play an 8-bit version of the Battle Hymn of the Republic at us. They were later brought down by focused EMP guns, wielded by the Alpha City Police Department. 
Even though the BattleBots were clearly labeled as not being from Heredry Industries, we decided to send them the bill for our windows anyway, just to see what would happen, and was paid without comment. Heredry Industries, ladies and gentlemen, where they apparently can't even be evil correctly anymore. The creature known as Vaya, whose appearance resulted in the death of graduate student Jamie Evers, and was last seen turning into mist and sinking into the sewers after destroying Evers' apartment, was seen confusingly saving a small boat and its occupants from a huge octopus-like creature on Thursday. The occupants of the boat managed to capture the events on their banana wrist phones while recording their journey. We were just floating out there, said 17-year-old Marcus Keene. You know, talking, enjoying the day, not being in school, when Jane, fellow student Jane Leeds, also 17, screamed and pointed out at these red things coming out of the water. At this point, the teens focused their wrist phones on what appeared to be four bright red, translucent tentacles rising out of the water. The tentacles waved back and forth for a moment, then shot forward wrapping around the small craft. I screamed pretty loud, continued Miss Leeds, who is in the running for valedictorian of her class. I mean, you see weird things in the city all the time. Jackie Quick came and did some cool speed stuff for an assembly at the school last year, and I've seen videos of Presto doing crazy things, but this was the closest I've ever been to anything, you know? Then I looked over, and Jeff looked like he was going to die, and I just freaked out. Jeff McGuire, 16, and the third member of the impromptu trip, had come in contact with one of the tentacles. It went right past me and wrapped around the boat, and I, like, lost my balance and fell against the thing, and everything went red, and that was it. Next thing I remember is paramedics waking me up on the docks. I missed everything cool. The feed from McGuire's wrist phone cut off at this point, displaying only a sickly organic red color. Miss Leeds' recording shows McGuire being coated in the substance the tentacles were composed of. It just wrapped around him so quickly, and he looked like one of those pictures of a fetus in the womb that we saw in biology. Just disgusting, Leeds said. Both Keen and Leeds captured what happened next. Just off the side of the boat, a gigantic round shape, three times the size of the boat and the same organic red as the tentacles, rose out of the water. Featureless at first, a huge, double retinaed eye seemed to push forward out of the mass, followed by something shaped like a beak, which opened and issued an unbearable whine, drowning out the screams of the students. I couldn't do anything, Keene said. I was just laying there on the bottom of the boat, freaking out, thinking we're gonna die, and I don't know why, but hoping my dad wasn't too mad about the boat, just losing it, right? And then, it was like, Viad! Really deep, right? Leeds continued. I looked up, and there was this black streak coming down, and it landed right on the thing's eye. The recordings show a black, person-shaped mass striking the red creature squarely in its dual retinas. Dozens of red tendrils, including the ones that had been holding the boat, moved with blinding speed to envelop the obsidian form. The thing let us go, which was cool, but the sack holding Jeff, that went too, Keene said. Me and Jane were all happy to be free, but like, what about Jeff, you know? When the red thing and the viad went under the water, we didn't know what to do. For more than a minute, the teens can be heard yelling their friend's name out over the increasingly calming waters. I was crying, Leeds said, just freaking out because this day went all crazy, and I thought Jeff was dead, and I didn't know what we were going to do. Then the boat, it just started, like flying over to the shore, and Mark's holding me, and I don't know what's going to happen. I think we're going to crash into the rocks, but we slowed down all of a sudden and bumped against them, enough so that the boat wouldn't float away. And then this red thing, the sack Jeff was in, flies out of the water. The recording shows the Viad creature emerging from the water, 
approaching the encased student and drawing the rapidly desiccating covering off the prone boy, absorbing it into itself. When it took the slime off Jeff, it got done and looked over at us, and then stepped back and waved its hand like, Come and check out your friend. Jeff was breathing, but we couldn't wake him up. Then we heard the police boat, them yelling over the bullhorn for the Viad to stay where it was, and it looked at us for a second and just jumped right over the trees, man. Just whoosh, gone. The cops picked us up and towed the boat back to the dock, and the EMT guys managed to wake Jeff up, and we told them all about what happened. Jeff McGuire was admitted to the hospital for observation, although doctors reported that the boy seemed to be in good health. Jane Leeds and Marcus Keene, shaken but unhurt, were turned over to their parents and will no doubt not be skipping school again anytime soon. The Viad creature is still wanted for questioning. If you have any information about or sightings of the Viad creature, please email us here at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Insiders are reporting that Empyrean and Captain Stupendous have had a meeting at Empyrean's base, the Universal Nucleus. The Nucleus, home of the Force Universal, which gifted Empyrean with its power, turning an average man into a cosmic force for good, is located, if that word can be used, at Point Singularity, from which all of time and space can be accessed, should the Force Universal allow it. The Captain and Empyrean, both longtime frontrunners for Mightiest Hero Alive, first met several years ago, each having been convinced that the other was an agent of their worst enemy. Rex Revile, in the case of the Captain, and the Empyrean's main foe, Professor Scruggly. After a knock-down, drag-out fight through, around, above, Below and slightly to the left of Alpha City, the truth was revealed, and the two then worked together to take down their respective miscreants, becoming fast friends in the process. Captain Stupendous and the Empyrean have fought side by side against such foes as the Anti-God Abraxas, the ancient monster known as Jagaron, Captain Stupendous's evil universe counterpart, Captain Horrendous, the future tyrant Malix Ab Eterno, and most recently, the former ruler of Titan, the Nitro Genie. Empyrean was overheard telling the captain that there was a threat which crossed both the past, present, and future, but, with the blessing of the Force Universal, they would be able to use Point Singularity to fight it in its own times, allowing both heroes to keep protecting Alpha City and the Earth. We here at Alpha City News count ourselves lucky that two heroes of the caliber of the Captain and Empyrean won't be missing from their posts while dealing with this unknown threat. Alpha Citizens, I've just been handed breaking news. The city's Department of Health and Safety has issued a citywide alert. University student Rita Marquez is being sought by health and safety as it is believed that she has been infected with some form of easily communicable disease by the plague doctor who kidnapped her almost two months ago. Miss Marquez is approximately five feet, seven inches tall, with shoulder length, curly brown hair, and was last seen wearing a blue sweater and jeans. If you see her, please do not approach her and remain at least five feet from her at all times, and please alert the police. If you can communicate with her, please ask her to remain where she is. If you have come into physical contact with Miss Marquez, please do not leave the area, as you may be infected with whatever disease she carries. It is imperative that you remain in place so as not to spread any infection. In the past, the plague doctor has infected people with both bubonic and pneumonic plagues, highly infectious forms of the measles and chicken pox, as well as some other less understood diseases. The plague doctor himself is presently at large in the city, his recently abandoned lair in University Square having been discovered by the looking glass man earlier today. For those of you who aren't familiar with the plague doctor, 
He is an epidemiologist, Dr. Gray Kendall, who several years ago came to the conclusion that humanity needed to be culled by disease to end its decadence. In the intervening years, he has committed at least 15 kidnappings, infecting those he takes with diseases he believes will spread and kill a majority of the population, and is responsible for an unknown number of deaths, both of those he has experimented on and of civilians infected by those he has released. Dr. Kendall, the Plague Doctor, is described as being 5 foot 5 inches tall, with black hair and a pronounced widow's peak skinny, and has generally unhealthy-looking gray skin. It is possible he has shaved his head, and, when not in his Plague Doctor costume, wears an old-fashioned black suit described as looking like an undertaker's outfit. When in costume, the Doctor wears a mask with a large beak-like nose and a hooded cloak, black gloves, and boots. If you see him, do not under any circumstances approach him as he has been known to carry vials of diseases which spread upon contact with the skin, and which he has no remorse about using on anyone in his way. If you believe you have come into contact with either Miss Marquez or Dr. Kendall prior to hearing this alert, please remain calm. Remain where you are. Try to limit any contact you might have with others, and alert city health and safety. Please, Alpha Citizens, Keep your eyes open, and be safe. And now, this week's Super Combat Scorecard. Hugo Reese knocked down K.O. Dockery. Presto traveled through the mind prism to hone her control of her own subconscious. Big Weird Joe slapped down Mudman. Jackie Quick outraced Full Bore and Hellbent. Spinning Jenny unwound the human knot. Garbage Man faced off with Dump Truck. Scooter Lass tripped up Lady Jump Rope. The Lion and the Tiger were bested by the Liger. The Black Mod was stopped by Dan Dan Evolution. Punching Judy lost to Grand Guignol. The Conundrum Corporation answered Lord Question Mark. The Schwa went the distance with Mr. Umlau. The Grammar Nazi got slapped by Misunderstanding. The Heavenly Dancing Trio convinced the ape with the brain of a robot to give up crime, then took it out clubbing. Captain Sarcastic matched wits with Plastic Fantastic. And lastly, the King of the Bafo Yak and the King of All Gone had a crown off, with no clear winner. You've been listening to Alpha City News. It's produced by Carter Lee. Sound beds were provided by Newsbeds.com. You can see us on Tumblr, at Twitter, on iTunes, and on Facebook under the name Alpha City News. You can email us with questions, comments, or suggestions, or if you just want to say hi, at alphacitynews at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening, and until next week... We hope you have a super day.